Greetings, it's Joe Exley here in New York City. I want to do a little test here with a handful of live microphones. Now, live miking is different than recording miking. Things that you'd use, you know, into the house PA or into, you know, an amplifier, effects, whatever you want, um, but they're specifically designed for a live environment. They don't capture quite as wide of a spectrum as, say, a mic to be used in an isolated recording studio. But also more durable and designed for, uh, you know, to avoid feedback and those type of things. And here on my sousaphone, um, this is a particularly dark sounding sousaphone. Uh, I've been looking for a mic with a little bit more punch and also a setup that allows a little bit more flexibility for me to move the mic around to get different kind of tones based on, you know, different responsibilities and different types of music that I'll be playing. I was talking to my good friend Brian uh, at Sennheiser, and he he actually sent me a handful of mics uh, to try out, and that's what I'd like to show you. The different microphones are the E835, the E935, the E609, and then I'll also compare those to the good old Shure SM58. I'm presenting these completely unbiased. Um, I'll let you decide. So I'm going directly into a mixing board that is also uh, an interface into an app that I highly recommend uh, called Aria Pro and it's going direct into that so and the, there's no compression no EQ no anything at all. You decide for yourself which one you like better uh, they all work pretty well. There are a lot of ways to mic and there are a lot of mic choices out there and these are only a few. A good old standard is a vocal microphone such as an SM58 or an SM57. I'm not using a 57 here. The 58 is very close. It's got a little bit more of a curve to it. I like the sound. It's a little warmer. Plus the 58 is kind of a, a tuba standard. It's used a lot. Uh, and the, the Sennheiser 835 and 8, uh, 935 are sort of on the level of it and are the same role. The 609, actually you can see I've got it on here, is a little different. It's got a different, uh, different enclosure. It's designed to uh, mic guitar cabinets. So actually I've been using it quite a bit. The thing that I like about this, um, this 609 is the form factor of it. You can see here it's very light. The vocal microphones uh, are actually quite heavy. So we can see uh, just uh, I'll talk about this later in a, uh, a future video more about uh, mic placement on a tuba bell, um, which is crucial. Uh, but for this um, demonstration, this test, I've, I've basically put it off axis a little bit, slightly into the bell, but not too far. Now, tubas in general, um, the, the center is a much brighter sound. There's a higher harmonics come out of the center, lower fundamental type harmonics come out the side. Especially a situation with a sousaphone bell, which is much wider, or a tuba that has a wide flat bell will get more fundamental than a tuba that has a more, uh, maybe deeper, less flared bell. The, the mount that I'm using is a Dinkum Systems universal mount. It can be used for cameras or microphones. Um, I've been using it for a little while. It works really well. No damage to the bell. It's got these little uh, pads here. It's not quite strong enough for the heavier microphones, but for this situation it works pretty well. One reason I like it is I can move it around for the various uh, tone that I want depending on the band. Now for the basis of this test, I've, I've done my best to keep the mic in exactly the same position and what I play, uh, you'll see, is pretty much the same. It's just a B flat, and I, I just do in you know maybe three octaves or so. It's nothing too extreme, but just a good basic solid tone. This is the Sennheiser E six oh nine.
This is the Sennheiser E835. This is the Sennheiser E935. This is the Shure SM58. Mm-hmm. 